What's up boys? Welcome back to another video. Today I have another nice TVP build for you guys. Uh, this is a build that's aimed to cripple Protoss early on and then it's gonna go into a macro game. Uh, basically we're gonna set up for a early timing attack uh, which is focused on the dealing economic damage with Marines and Hellions. And then the follow-up is just the standard stuff that you guys should probably know by now. If not, check out my other videos. Shameless plug. Um, so basically, this build goes for a reactor first, and then you're gonna get into building up a lot of marines and a few hellions, and you're gonna try to do a cool drive by. Now, I do have a, a few good tips for you guys. Uh, one cool thing about this build order is that uh, you can actually do it reactively to when Protoss scouts. Uh, this build, for example, is stronger when Protoss does not probe scout, uh, and you actually have time to decide whether you want to do this build or not. And there's also different follow-ups to it. So like if somewhere during the build you decide uh, it's probably not going to work out, you can still change it up and do something else. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty flexible. And that's one thing I like the most about this build. I, I use this build a lot myself. Uh, this is a game against Skillis from, I think, yeah, it, it was probably from a tournament. I don't remember which one that I played in. Uh, it's a pretty short game. So I'm, I'm pretty much just going to you know give you guys the theory the build order I'm not going to go into some crazy macro game stuff and send you guys off with it so this is the part where i meant that you could adapt is here we go for a reactor first with this build no marine no reaper reactor first and this build is the best if they do not probe scout or if they probe scout but they leave in time to block your natural for example before seeing if you're making a unit or a reactor that's when it, it's the strongest so if you if the guy probe scouts and he just stays around here and you don't feel comfortable doing it anymore you could totally go for a marine and a reaper or a reaper uh, and just do the build you are planning on doing um or you can just say uh, you know i don't care at all i'm gonna do it anyway but we're gonna go for a reactor first uh, i'm doing an 18 scv scout by the way as normal cc goes down on the low ground uh, this is actually a build that you don't necessarily need to scv scout with since you get a lot of marines early on, you're pretty safe against most things. So we get the depot after the command center, everything completely standard so far. But basically, my, I, only, I only scout to see the nexus, I don't want to see anything else. Now, if you don't SCV scout, one thing you can do with the first two marines is to scout around your base a little bit. Because, you know, normally you make the reaper and you send it straight across to scout around here. But since you have marines, you can send them across right away. You could, for example, send one Marine over to this area and one Marine over to this area to see if there's any proxies. Uh, but in this case, I scouted as natural and uh, yeah, I wasn't really afraid of anything, so I don't have to scout around. Uh, one thing important to mention is you have two versions of this build. If you want to go for really fast Hellions, you can make the factory before your first two Marines. But with the, with the version I'm doing, which is basically a harder hitting timing attack, I make two marines and then the factory so so make sure they get that right then after factory we're gonna go for the gas we're gonna go up to six marines here with this reactor then this is actually an important thing um well it's not super important but i think you can accidentally win a lot of games with this is that normally at this time terran has one reaper and one marine with two more marines producing and probably a bunker against the adept right and that is because the Reaper takes a really long time to produce and we skipped it. So you already have four Marines. So when you have four Marines, you can always move out and try to catch an Adept. Because a lot of times, like no matter if my opponent's pro or it was like randomly uh, an easier opponent in an online cup, they all fall for this because they will shade the Adept thinking that you indeed have a Reaper and a Marine. And they will not pay attention to four Marines in the middle of the map and you will just be able to snipe off an Adept uh, wherever it comes from. Now on this map, I'm not a 100% sure, but I think the adept should always come from this side. Don't quote me on that though. So here you see, we made six Marines, three sets from the reactor, and then we're gonna switch it over to the factory. Now, once you reach six Marines, you're gonna move out with them and you're gonna rally the Hellions behind. Uh, now there's a few things you could run into while doing this build. Uh, obviously, Blink or Robo, those are maybe the two most standard versions. Um, and then the other thing is Stargate. And Stargate is the only thing that's really different. And that's because with Blink and Robo, they would pretty much have three Stalkers and and that's what they will have. They will not have like any 
immortal coming out or anything from the twilight council right but with a stargate they they usually have a depth in this case he has stalkers but they usually have a depth and then an oracle or a phoenix may come out now if they go for phoenix i feel like you pretty much win the game straight away most cases especially if it's a depth if it's oracle you may actually have to micro a little bit more um, back at home this is what the follow-up looks like for me uh, just before i'm gonna go in I make a tech lab at the barracks for my starport. Uh, as always, guys, I'll post the replay in the description. So if you want to look at the builder entirely a bit slower, write it down or something, make sure to download it from there. But I make a tech lab for the starport with my barracks, fly the starport on that. And then after four Hellions, so I'm going to make two sets of Hellions from the factory. Two are here, two are about to pop out, which I also rally straight across the map, by the way, as you can see. And then I'm going to put the barracks on this reactor and make a tech lab with the factory. And it may all sound complicated, but I think it sounds a bit simpler if I just say I'm going for Marine Tank Banshee, right? One on one with their respective add-ons. Now this is what the attack looks like. You have six Marines, two Hellions. Then you can imagine why it's easier when you play against Adept Phoenix. And it's because, um, yeah, Ad Adepts can't really kill anything fast enough. And Adepts, more importantly, cannot micro against your units because of their short range. If they have Stalkers, they could actually kite back. Uh, in this case, he was too late. Uh, but since he was unprepared, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Um, so basically the focus is, uh, in some cases you can kill the Protoss. Like I said, if they go Adept Phoenix, if they mess up like this, you can go in straight for the kill. But most most of the time what it happens when they're like semi-prepared is the Marines attack the gateway units and then the Hellions go straight for the probes. You can go for the main even if you have... Uh, if you, your Hellions catch up, or if you think the natural is well defended, you can run by into the main, get some probes. In this case, these probes are uh, free to kill for my Hellions, so we go for these ones, obviously. Um, the hardest thing you can face is if they make a battery, a blind battery plus a wall-off. Because if it's just a wall-off, your units will just win the fight, kind of like you saw here, right? Uh, he, he actually had a wall off, but yeah, six Marines and two Stalkers just beat uh, three Gateway units. Or I'm not sure if I said that correctly, but you guys know what I mean. Um, but if they have, and if they have just the battery, but no wall off, what happens is, is that you can run by the Hellions into the main and get a lot of probes. Like this is not a timing dedicated to kill the Protoss per se, but mostly to do economic damage. So if they just have the battery, no wall off, usually your Marines will keep their Gateway units busy and the Hellions will go into the main. Then uh, the last tip I can give you is if there is an Oracle, like here I didn't micro perfectly because I just stood still, but then again, neither did he. Um, but if there is an Oracle, you would focus it with your Marines always. The Oracle is always the top priority. If there's a Phoenix, you can pretty much ignore it. But if there's an Oracle, it would always be the top priority. And the perfect micro would be to stutter step backwards because then the Oracle has to fly forwards and they won't have like maximum attacking time, right? So if he does go for the Oracle, it's the main attacking priority. Remember that. And then back at home, like I said, this is what the follow-up looks like. Uh, Marine tank Banshee. So Starport is going to be making Banshee with Cloak. Marines on the reactor and Tech Lab on the factory. Then at this point, uh, there's a little bit of preference that you can uh, use in your build order. You could either make a third to see right now, or you can make two extra barracks now if you didn't do too much damage i think 3cc could be pretty nice because this this build is actually pretty safe like you're in any case you're gonna trade out units like you will never not kill anything so in the worst case maybe you kill a few stalkers or adepts or something like that right um so if you play 3cc and you have tanks and banshees behind it does feel pretty safe you can add a bunker here so going 3cc is perfectly fine but in a case like this, where you do a lot of economic damage, how many probes did I kill? 13 probes, that's that's definitely a lot. I, I would be happy with seven or whatever, for example, like that's already a good number. Uh, but if I kill this many probes, I feel safer getting three racks just so nothing could possibly happen to me. You know what I mean? Like it's just a very, uh, very strong safety measure, I suppose. Um, just in case, like three racks is not economically bad or anything like that, it's just not quite economically as strong as a 3cc but you do have a lot of units early and perhaps more importantly going 3 racks before a 3cc 
allows you to hit a timing afterwards with stim like you can actually counter attack because if you play 3cc the biggest problem is that you won't occupy tech labs anytime soon you can't make stim or combat shields and you're not going to be able to hit a counter timing attack but with 3rex as you can see stim should start now on this tech lab with a nice marauder uh, this one fooled myself there um, and I'm actually going to be able to counterattack in 100 seconds. If you play 3cc first, you can imagine those barracks would have been delayed by, I don't know, another 40 seconds or 30 seconds, whatever it is. And the counterattack just hits uh, that much later. Now, th this is kind of a thing I like to do, uh, is keep the Banshees until 2. You can totally send them one by one, like it's no big deal at all. But I feel like, especially when the game is hectic, uh, this is a move they don't really see coming a lot because two Banshees are so strong because they can one-shot probes together. So if they don't have detection, you, you will kill 15 probes really fast. Like if the if the robot's not done, like in this case, or the Observer's across the map, Oracle has no energy, whatever it is, um, two Banshees will keep pro kill probes very fast. Now here I decide to ignore the, na the third because the natural obvious is way more probes. So this is basically what it looks like. Yeah. You, you can see how fast it's gonna go if there's no observer. Proting an observer probably takes like 20 seconds, so... Um, yeah, obviously he just GG's here because it's over. Uh, at my own base, uh, the only thing that was missing from the follow-up was... You know, the eBay after the three barracks and the third command center right after. Uh, but once again, check out the replay from the description if you really want to check out the builder closely. Now... Um, uh, this is a build I've been using for a long time. I actually took this builder from Russian Terran player Braddock. We always call it the Braddock build. So maybe if you heard that term, now you know what it is. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, see you guys next time. Adios.